At NASA, we're on a mission of equity, launching opportunity. Equal opportunity to challenge and inspire. To learn and thrive. To reach those we've never reached before. To use science, data, and technology to advance equity. To shatter boundaries. And break down barriers across America. To create a better future. We hope you'll join us on this mission. NASA is a 21st century agency with 22nd century goals. And our mission is made up of very complex challenges, but we have tremendous opportunities and rewards. And what we know is that diversity and equity and inclusion and accessibility, it leads to greater innovation. And our commitment to these values has encouraged our unequaled workforce to soar. Mission equity will help NASA's programs accessible to all Americans. It includes the historically underserved communities such as people with disabilities, veterans, students, rural Americans, small businesses, underserved urban areas, and communities of color. NASA is a, just a small piece of the Biden administration's efforts to advance equal opportunity, but we should lead the way. We need information from you. We want to thank you for your participation today, and please continue to engage with us because when NASA opens doors to talent that is previously left untapped, then the universe is the limit. I'm Sophia Marnell, the president and owner of Alexton Incorporated. Uh, we've been in business officially since 2005. However, we started with NASA um, um, as a uh, contractor or subcontractor around 2003, 2004. Um, we started in headquarters um, doing uh, budget and financial work, but then it led to information technology, uh, it led to administration, program project management, to even a co-patent with technology with Goddard Space Center for an assessment tool. NASA has always been um, one of those vendors who have helped us grow. We started very small, you know, one or two people to be honest, and I was on site working at NASA. And if it wasn't for them kind of saying, you can do this, um, I probably wouldn't have maybe started Alexton. So I kind of have NASA to thank for that. But then from there, moving on from headquarters to the program offices and then to, through the centers um, has not only allowed us to grow through NASA um, and be able to work at um, the visitor centers, which we lead in, in, in are the contract contractor for the visitor centers for Goddard and Wallops. We're now able to show the world what NASA does uh, for um, for space and new technology and just um, information from the beginning to the end for folks that are as far away as Dubai and England um, and kind of share what NASA does. We have partnered with uh, NASA SBA who has been the forefront of allowing us to understand not only how NASA does in um, helping small business, but what we need to grow and how not only can how NASA can help us, but how we can you know assist NASA as well. So that partnership has really led not only to, to expand throughout NASA, but also, believe it or not, has allowed us to expand throughout these other agencies. Because we started at NASA, they taught us kind of uh, as a small business and especially as a diverse business, you know, what it takes. And so we were able to kind of utilize that, which believe it or not, has let us win a $300 million BPA at the Department of Energy amongst other contracts. So we've grown as a small business, um, but the right way. So we do have um, NASA to, to thank for that, and, and especially the, the SBA and the folks at procurement and, um, and learning the technologies that NASA has has really assisted us. Um, being a diverse um, small business, there are challenges. Um, and understanding what those challenges are 
um, is helpful to make sure that you are um, success successful. And so I think that now, especially now in 2020, 2021, um, I, I talk to all small businesses to say that, you know, NASA is one of those agencies that as a small business and diverse, um, for di diverse technologies and, and you as a company is definitely the first part you should start. NASA is definitely helping small businesses, especially um, those of us that come from a diverse background. You know, NASA is one of those agencies that um, support, not only support small business, but kind of mentors and says, hey, you can do it. So I will definitely always be grateful um, to NASA for helping us on that. And we continue to work with NASA to improve not only ourselves, but others that um, want to at NASA. Hi, my name is Mohammed Rabia. I'm Associate Dean for Research and Graduate Studies at the College of Engineering at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Uh, I have been here since 1987, and we always had some form of collaboration with NASA on various research projects. Uh, I forgot also to mention that we are a minority serving institution for Hispanics and Pacific Islanders. In the last five to six years, our collaboration with NASA has ex accelerated significantly through so, primary interaction with Teledyne Brown, Lockheed Martin, who are major subcontractors for NASA and also NASA JPL. Uh, these activities have been phenomenal in exciting students to join the college and seek collaboration with NASA. I have to say that out of federal agencies, NASA has the highest impact on young people, uh, students just coming out of high school or even juniors or seniors. Once NASA is mentioned in a sentence, you could see their eyes sparkling. I would say our most successful uh, recent interaction is our collaboration with Teledyne Brown in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, we have been successful in having a successful and continued relationship. In addition to Teledyne Brown, we had great interaction with Lockheed Martin, um, typically related to the Orion project, uh, opposite to Teledyne Brown. Lockheed collaboration came in the form of multiple small projects that engage students here locally, so they don't go uh, to uh, Denver with few exceptions. Just as a name, NASA is a still shines well with young people. So they may not know about other agencies, even though they are doing an important job, but any kid in even junior high, you tell him what is NASA, he would give you some idea. Overall, I could see that our recruitment effort has increased in terms of quality and quantity of incoming students because of our work with NASA. Hi, my name is Steve Shi. I'm the Associate Administrator for Diversity and Equal Opportunity here at NASA. I'm so grateful for your participation in today's public meeting. NASA is fully committed to diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, DEIA, because we know we're at our best when we include and make our agency equitable and accessible to everyone. This allows us to access the full variety of skills, knowledge, capabilities, thinking, problem solving, and innovation that we need to be able to succeed in the challenging work we do. And this allows us to best serve the public, helping to make our country stronger, healthier, and more successful and helping the world be a better place. We've already been doing a lot of good work at NASA to reinforce DEIA. NASA recently added a new agency core value of inclusion to demonstrate and communicate our commitment and prioritization of DEIA. Our missions and projects reflect our focus on DEIA, including our Artemis program that will land the first woman and first person of color on the moon. We've achieved significant successes in an anti-harassment initiative that we launched to enhance the safety and success of our workforce and our missions. More recently, we also implemented a unity initiative 
connecting our workforce even more to our missions and to each other. So we have the best teamwork to achieve the greatest success for the benefit of all human beings. We're especially fully engaged in the implementation of multiple new executive orders on DEIA, including the January 20th, 2021 executive order on advancing racial equity and support for underserved communities through the federal government, and the June 25th, 2021 executive order on diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility in the federal workforce. Our strong commitment to DEIA is one of the important reasons that NASA has been ranked number one among large agencies for employee engagement for the past nine consecutive years. And we've also been ranked number one in inclusiveness in the past seven consecutive years for which that data has been available. We have a saying here at NASA. At NASA, we make air and space available for everyone. Now, initially, air refers to psychological safety, so people don't have to hold their breath for fear of being a victim of discrimination, harassment, or retaliation. And space refers to our commitment to providing room for everyone to be authentic, to belong, and fully contribute to our agency. When we do these two things, we're able to achieve the greatest accomplishments in our aeronautics and space work, including our science and technology work. And this enables us to provide the best benefits of our work to all human beings. Thank you so much for participating and supporting our mission equity and DEIA work. And thank you for joining us in making air and space available for everyone. My name is Anita Renteria. I am the Vice President of Business Development for Barrios Technology, uh, a woman-owned small business and a NASA contractor uh, since the beginning of the company. We started in 1980 when a former NASA person, uh, Emmy Barrios Robinson, so the company's named after her maiden name, um, and back in the late 80s, when the first socioeconomic set-asides were happening, decided to start a company. So she gathered a group of eight uh, one of which was our current CEO, Sandy Johnson, and they wrote a proposal on nights and weekends and they won. So literally Barrios opened its doors 41 years ago, July 1st, um, with, uh, with the prime contract to NASA and we've supported human space flight ever since. Today we have about 600 employees. We, are, we have a prime contract for the human space flight technical integration contract in Houston at JSC. We have a prime contract at Marshall Space Flight Center for project coordination across various different programs. We have uh, folks in, at Ames Research Center in California and Kennedy Space Center. We have about 150 people supporting all the Artemis missions uh, that there are. So we, we, we have quite a breadth and we had a lot of experience, a whole lot of growth. We do everything from curating the moon rocks to uh, pluck, helping to pluck the, the Orion capsule out of the ocean when it lands and the test, and the test uh, flights that we've had recently. The impact that's had on our company, first of all, our employees love coming to work. We all, you know, we're, it's all about the mission for, for our company. Um, people are very proud of the work that we do, that we get the chance to do for, for NASA. And um, out of that has grown um, opportunities for us in commercial space. So we do work with, in fact, almost all of the commercial space companies um, that you would have heard of. Uh, we have uh, done work with uh, the Cygnus spacecraft. We do work for the Dream Chaser. Uh, we do work for the Boeing CST-100. Um, you know, all those companies and others are companies that we support. And that comes directly from our heritage as a space company. The growth of the company certainly has followed the programs that the agency has uh, has developed uh, over time. Shuttle, we were big shuttle supporters. We were mission control center folks during the shuttle days. We have done uh, all of the human spaceflight contracts uh, that have come along, Barrios has been a part of. Um, so that legacy um, is, is part of why I think the company has been so successful. We started as woman-owned originally, we maintained woman-owned, and we will continue to be a woman-owned and operated company. And so we're very proud of that. What I would say to other companies that are that are like us, woman-owned or, or small companies, uh, veteran-owned, whatever it may be, is uh, it's important to take advantage of the resources that are available through NASA, small business liaisons, small business advocates at the different centers to really do your homework and make sure that you respond to all the things that they ask for when they ask for information, like the recent RFI that came out, request for information. Treat it seriously, answer the test questions, uh, uh, write up what you do, 
uh, and, and then make sure that when you network with other companies, they understand what you do that relates to what they do. There, there truly is room for everyone in this industry. It's very technical, very engineering, very science, and that can be scary. But all of those different technical areas have to be supported by different types of administration work, technical administration, or, or just admin, administration, uh, scheduling, cost, uh, uh, resource management, uh, human resources. All those things are, are also part of, of getting the missions accomplished. So whatever your firm can do that fits in this very wide spectrum of services, um, there is a place for you uh, within, within this industry. And I hope that uh, if you are interested, that you'll, you'll make that move and, and come join us uh, as part of the NASA team. My name is uh, Xia Anna Wood. Everybody calls me, uh, call me Anna. I am the assistant director for research and development at the Johnson C. Smith University, which I have been working for since 2011. Uh, I'm mainly responsible for acquiring more extramural and government funding to advance research development and strengthen our institutional capacity that can impact the enrollment, retention, and graduation of our students. I want to give you just a brief statement on the history of our university's work with NASA. Johnson C. Smith University has been building relationship with NASA since 2017. We have hosted NASA's annual HBCU uh, MI engagement forum during the week of the CIAA basketball tournament since uh, 2018. Mainly our division, the division of government sponsored programs and research, manage this uh, relationship with NASA on behalf of the university. So since 2018, uh, we have hosted three annual forums on our campus. I want to thank you, thank NASA for this uh, important, very helpful forum for us. Because uh, at this forum, our faculty and our professional staff members that learned a lot of NASA's programs, grants and contract opportunities, and also learned how to apply for grant and contracts. There were about 15 HBCU MSI schools attended this forum and engage in, in discussions with the panel members and officers from NASA. But this also gives us, this is you, the opportunity to collaborate and partner with other HBCs. So to date, I can say the relationship with NASA has resulted in GCSU gaining familiarity with NASA's programs, gaining publicity on GCSU's research capacity, student internships, and the identification of many different grant and contract opportunities. In short, I hope by working with NASA, we can extend and enhance our research capabilities to develop more scientists and experts for the space sector in the future. Hello, I am Carla Smith-Jackson, the NASA Senior Procurement Executive, Deputy Chief Acquisition Officer, and the Assistant Administrator for Procurement. I want to take this opportunity to thank you first 
for considering the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, either by learning about our agency or exploring acquisition opportunities. Secondly, and more importantly, for giving us insight into the agency's response to Executive Order 13985, Advancing Racial Equity and Support for the Underserved Communities Through the Federal Government, by contributing to our assessment and understanding of potential barriers that underserved and underrepresented communities, businesses, academia, and individuals face in NASA's procurement programs and grant opportunities. The fact of the matter is, while these are challenging and unprecedented times at NASA, it's an incredible opportunity to make a difference in the way we do business, with the potential to make an impact for years to come. Your ideas are critical to our success, and this effort will involve the whole of the nation, uniting the brightest minds of academia and businesses of all sizes and types. By responding to our questions through this request for information process on or before August 31st, we hope to initiate vibrant, meaningful, and substantive discussions that will help the agency improve current policies, practices, and programs with the goal to develop a more robust industrial base. NASA is on a journey to the moon, Mars and beyond, and we are determined to partner with you in this important endeavor. Your feedback to this request for information will contribute to this effort, and NASA's goal of landing the first woman and the first person of color on the lunar surface as part of the Artemis program. Together, we can promote equity, signaling to every American that they too can see themselves among the stars. The agency's many public, private partnerships are already advancing capabilities for human spaceflight while stimulating commercial activities. NASA spends approximately 85% of its budget on acquiring goods and services, and the work in which you are engaged in is right for our economy, our competitiveness, and the progress we will make on the path to greater discovery, ingenuity, and innovation. We look forward to working with you to ensure you have the knowledge and critical resources needed to compete for contracts and grant opportunities so that you can produce the goods and the services we need to lead us into the unknown and keep America the greatest nation on Earth. Hello, my name is Diana Vashu. I am the Chief Operating Officer for Harris Miller Miller & Hanson. We are a uh, small woman-owned business out of Burlington, Massachusetts. Um, our firm works on environmental analysis in support of policy, uh, research, as well as the application of environmental laws. Uh, and most of our work focuses in the transportation sector, so aviation, uh, highway, and rail. We have been around for about 40 years and have had the chance of work, uh, to work with NASA uh, several times in our history. But most recently, in the last two years or so, uh, we pursued a uh, project um, that is supposed to look at the noise impacts of sonic booms of a new aircraft, new experimental aircraft, the X-59. Uh, this is a NASA project that has been ongoing for many years now, and, uh, and we are now at a very exciting a time when the plane is almost ready to fly and our job will be to uh, follow it around the nation to a, a few sites and uh, record, its, uh, record the, its flights and the noise it makes and see what kind of impact that has on local communities. The way that I think we uh, positioned ourselves to have a relationship with NASA, which of course isn't easy because every company in the world would like to work on exciting and, and innovative projects like that, is that uh, we hire a, a variety of folks in all uh, uh, areas of expertise. So noise and vibration and environmental application, research, policy development. Um, and we bring these folks together to put together proposals, uh, white papers, and uh, uh, other innovative ways to show off our expertise. If I may offer some advice to other uh, businesses, especially small disadvantaged businesses in terms of how to pursue work with NASA, um, one thing is hire the best people you can possibly find. Make them uh, be of, of various backgrounds, uh, make them uh, have different risk tolerances, make them be interested in different parts of uh, the science uh, uh, in whichever business you're in, um, and then really focus these folks for a while on understanding uh, what NASA's mission is, uh, how it relates to budgets, how it relates to what you do, and, and then just be persistent. Write, 
write proposals, write articles, go to conferences, uh, get to know as much as you know about the people who, uh, who work on NASA's uh, programs. I think that the sort of opportunities that working with NASA uh, creates for folks entering the, the market, the, the labor market, are just so exciting that it's hard to overestimate the impact of, of NASA on, um, on diversity. Uh, really, the sky is the limit. Um, and if you think about how hard these missions are that NASA uh, has to accomplish, really, it can't be limited to uh, to any any particular type of uh, person to support it. It has to be a very uh, technically and otherwise varied uh, group of people. Hi, my name is Almisha Campbell, and I serve as the Assistant Vice President for Research and Economic Development at Jackson State University. I want to say that Jackson State has benefited greatly from our long-standing relationship with NASA. From hosting the NASA Technology Infusion World Tours, to NASA Days at JSU, to funding received to establish our NASA Resource Educator Center, and the innovations in climate education, cooperative agreement, and the NASA Shared Services Mentor Protege Agreement. That NASA Mentor um, Protege Agreement has helped us greatly in terms of using that experience to position JSU to leverage its capabilities to build relationships that's critical to ensuring high performance and efficiency. We also were provided with resources that helps us with HR and talent development at the student and faculty and staff levels and it assisted with diversifying the institutional research portfolio. So moving away from just grants only to also contracts and subcontracts. And also through those internship provided to our students, they were able to get real world experiential training um, that would allow them to access jobs and careers. Had they not participated in this program, may not have been able to know that these things are offered by NASA. And also it facilitated access to corporate partners and technologies that are critical to STEM curricula and research training. So we were able to change some of our STEM curriculum to make sure that we were aligning them with NASA's mission. And so we all know that um, diversity in space is needed, for, but academic institutions have to provide those opportunities for students to engage in space related activities such as aligning their STEM curriculum with NASA's mission and providing students with information about career options at NASA, not just the STEM, but also allowing them to know that if they're in business, public health, or liberal arts, that there are opportunities for them at NASA directorate. Um, I would say that NASA has been a really great partner for Jackson State Universities, and I'm sure that other academic institutions can benefit from such a partnership with NASA. Good afternoon. I'm Melanie Saunders, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator. NASA has long recognized that diverse, equitable, inclusive, and accessible workplaces yield higher performing organizations. These same principles apply to NASA's approach to contracting and partnerships. Working with a diverse set of businesses, whether small businesses, minority, women, or veteran owned, or operating in economically disadvantaged areas yields a higher performing national space economy a stronger STEM workforce for America, and greater advancements in exploration, discovery, aeronautics, and technology developments that benefit all Americans. We're looking to ensure the benefits of our science missions reach across the country, from urban neighborhoods to rural communities, that every American farmer has access to earth science data that can help boost crop yields, that every university and college, including minority serving institutions, have access to opportunities to participate in research and development efforts that propel the NASA mission. These are ambitious goals, I know, but NASA is, by its nature and to its core, ambitious in all it does. We hope that you will join us in our mission. We will begin five breakout sessions at 2 p.m. Eastern and hope you can participate in these important conversations. 